Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're going to talk about censorship in anime and manga, and in this case, light novels, Seven Seas, has gotten some pushback for censoring some light novels. And we're going to talk about the hows and the whys of this. Now, Seven Seas has always been pretty decent, uh, you know, bringing content over here that normally wouldn't get picked up. And it was surprising to hear that they were censoring these light novels. You know, we talk about censorship in anime and video games uh, over here all the time because it does seem like it's starting to increase. Uh, you know, there seems to be an attack on anime, an attack on manga, uh, definitely an attack on light novels. We've seen some light novels banned altogether in countries like Australia. We've seen, you know, harmless action figures and toys of anime characters, manga characters get banned from Amazon. I mean, this, this continues to happen and Seven Seas was not a company I thought would uh, partake in the banning of Japanese pop culture, but apparently they have. We're going to talk about that before we get into it. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 187,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about anime, manga, animation, comics, whatever interests us that day. And um, I've been kind of keeping an eye on this situation. I don't think we've done a video on this one yet, but uh, Seven Seas is revising four of its titles after censorship criticism. We're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about why why they altered its light novels uh, to begin with. Um, you know, they, they admitted to heavy-handed censorship of Classroom of the Elite and Mushoku Tensei jobless reincarnation. They admitted to it. And uh, there was outrage, uh, fan outrage. People are like, they don't like to hear that uh, the content they're getting is not uh, quite what the Japanese content is. So... Let's talk about that. Geeky's sitting this video out. Uh, she should be back later today. She's out and about doing stuff. Uh, so you're stuck with me, I guess. Anyway, uh, this is coming from Otaku USA Magazine. Seven Seas revises four titles after censorship criticism. Um, they're revising and republishing Classroom of the Elite Volume 7, Mushoku Tensei Volume 1, Mushoku Tensei Volume 2, and I in Love with a Villainous Volume 1 after receiving criticism for changing or cutting scenes. That's a very expensive mistake, especially now because it's really hard for manga publishers to find printers. There's such a demand right now for manga and light novels that a lot of these companies are having a hard time finding printers. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who works for a manga publisher and he was like yeah we're like we can't find anybody to print our stuff you know it's kind of crazy uh for example this again this is coming from otaku usa for example in mushoku tensei volume one there's a scene in the original japanese where a man tries to pull down a girl's pants in the english adaptation the man instead pulls on the woman's shirt so it will cover her stomach and keep her warm <laughs> <laughs> no, what? Uh, jelly donuts, everybody. Jelly donuts. Another scene uses the term uh, R-A-P-E and adultery in the original Japanese, but this was altered to cheater and womanizer in English, changing the meaning. One is consensual, one is not. In I'm in Love with a Villainous, paragraphs about LGBT representation were removed um, the author became aware of this and asked fans to act calmly and rationally, saying she was sad about the changes. Uh, yeah, we all know that uh, uh, anime fans, uh, cartoon fans, all act calmly and rationally <laughs> all the time. Uh, there probably was lots of uh, outrage on Twitter, and we're going to talk about that. 7C says is reevaluating. It's editing in that we have since uh, changed how we edit these books to make sure important lines are not lost. It says people who bought these volumes can exchange them for the new editions. Now, again, this is a very costly mistake, but it might have to be a lesson learned. You know, uh, again, Seven Seas, it's surprising to see them do this because they've always, at least in my experience, brought, brought stuff out mostly unaltered. There is a trend, though, 
And I don't know where the, the failure is. We're going to read this article on Anime News Network and try to find out what exactly happened. Uh, you know, they don't seem to be censorous over there as a company, but I have to wonder if some of the localizers that these companies are hiring aren't uh, taking some liberties with the source material because they personally are offended by some of this Japanese stuff. You know, we, we, we've seen this before. We've seen it in games. Uh, we have seen it with, uh, you know, uh, anime dubs for sure that people working as localizers for these companies, you know, I don't know if it's a company wide thing, but they decide to take it upon themselves to, uh, change things to be more politically correct, you know, to be less offensive uh, to to them and their peers, and and my take on that is you're you're paid to translate content, translate it as it's supposed to be, or we're gonna run into a four kids situation, uh, which they actually bring up on Anime News Network. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this article up. This is uh you know Anime News Network. We have kind of a love hate relationship uh, with them. I think that they you know, are still the predominant source of anime news. However, um, they have gotten weirdly political in recent years. Uh, they were responsible for posting phony evidence of, of Vic Mignogna uh, groping young girls. And it turned out that, that those pictures were not put in proper context. Uh, and one of their editors called us Nazis. <laughs> so it's kind of hard for me, even though I, you know, I've been reading MA News Network for years. It's kind of hard uh, for me to to uh, have warm, fuzzy feelings about them at this point. But I will give them credit uh, where credit is due. And sometimes, you know, they they come through and they just report the news. Uh, but MA News Network put this article up: Why Seven Seas altered its light novels, and they talk about how entire paragraphs from the original Japanese books appear to have been omitted from the English version of Classroom of the Elite, Volume 7. Uh, what should have been a big emotional climax came across as muted due to the sparse prose throughout the book. When fans cross-referenced the Seven Seas version with an English fan translation, the differences they listed were substantial enough to fill dozens of pages. And again, uh, again they are reprinting the books because they got busted. They got busted and they have to reprint the books. In the following months, uh, similarly heavy-handed changes across various other series came to light. Again, Mushoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation, and I'm in Love with the Villainous drew particular scrutiny because the omitted text included sections dealing with controversial issues, including sexual assault and homophobia. It also quickly became clear that they were made without consultation with the original authors. That's very 1980s of them. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's uh, in this day and age, and especially with the rise uh, and the, the, the very easy access to fan translations, you're going to get busted. They're going to find out what you did. You know, you're totally going to get busted. You can't you can't pull a fast one on the fans now. You might have been able to 20, 30 years ago before the advent of uh, fan translations on the internet, but uh, not not now. You can't do it now. Um, so we talked about how the author of "I'm in Love with Villainous" was surprised and shocked that they had they had uh, cut out entire paragraphs. Uh, you know, dealing with uh, reflections on internalized homophobia. Um, Mushoku Tensei's case was especially concerning because it wasn't just a case of missing text, but of certain plot points being rewritten altogether. It didn't help Seven Seas' image when the TV anime adapted some of the cut content. Uh, so, so they're like, they cut this stuff out of the light novel, they cut it out of the book, and then uh, the anime airs, and people are like, wow, it's so different from the book. It's like, no, it's, it's actually not. They, they cut that out. Uh, this is kind of like, yeah, I mean, we're seeing this so much, you know, even going you know, back to the Dr. Seuss situation. What, what is it with the book banning? Like, we're not burning the books. We're just changing the books or making the books unavailable. You know, it's, it's, we're really in a, and this is another culture we're dealing with. I mean, for all this talk of, uh, you know, stopping the Asian hate. We sure do hate Asian culture, don't we? 
Um, you know, I, I guess my thing is like, if, if, if you're localizing something, did you read it before you brought it over here? We saw what happened with interspecies reviewer where like Funimation got the, the rights to it and they started dubbing it and they're like, Oh God, this is lewd. Like you didn't read it first. Why are you acquiring licenses to titles that you're not familiar with? I mean, that seems really, really stupid. And it seems like a very bad business decision. If you're not comfortable publishing something, then maybe don't license it. I, that's crazy thought, I know. Um, a crazy thought. They said some of the changes to uh, Mushoku Tensei uh, were carried out with a malicious, censorous intent. And if there's one thing anime fans hate, it's censorship and localization, whether self-imposed or prompted by external pressure. I think in this case with Seven Seas, I mean, they've always had a pretty good track record. I have to think that that they were probably just, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, we're going to try to find out what happened. Uh, anime has a, a long history of egregious localization changes with infamous examples like four kids. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense to fixate on changes that deal with sensitive subjects because they clearly step outside the bounds of what a translation uh, should accomplish. Yeah, again, if you're uncomfortable with the source material, maybe don't license it in the first place. Let another publisher bring it out over here. Yeah, it's just a thought. <laughs> you know, at the same time, it's worth taking a more nuanced and holistic view of localization to understand the context in which these sensitive changes happen. Okay, now, now here's where we start defending it, right? Is that what's going to happen? Um, it's short-sighted to tar all localization professionals across different mediums and publishing contexts under the same brush, as there are many important factors that go overlooked when it comes to these discussions. Uh, let's take a closer look at the backlash around Seven Seas novel uh, light novel localizations in particular um it took years for the changes to get noticed by the readers in the first place again with the internet it's so much easier to find out what you're missing out on you know they're talking about the history of japanese to english translations and how in the past uh, you know readers basically needed their hands held you know and that's sort of why they made changes that they made or at least those were the justifications for changes that were made. Uh, they said that's not the case now. Um, they said what makes Seven Seas case an oddity is that the publisher entered the light novel market in earnest in 2017 uh, when contemporaries like Yen Press and J Novel Club were also ramping up output. On top of that, the website has been running a monthly reader survey asking for feedback and licensing suggestions for at least as long. So Seven Seas is clearly responsive to what its audience is looking for. And so the fact that it took readers four years to start calling out the translation practices must have come as an extra shock. So apparently this has been going on for a while. Truth of the matter is the bulk of what Seven Seas was changing was invisible to the audience. Wait, what, they're justifying it? Most people would only read a translated novel because they couldn't read the original language. After all, even a reader who is deeply familiar with light novels and Japanese culture will not notice if the translated text has been extensively edited for brevity and flow unless they read it alongside the original text. If those readers enjoyed the prose. The plot wasn't noticeably different from what was advertised. Then you could say that Seven Seas succeeded and they might have continued getting away with it if it weren't for fan translations to compare their work to. Um, localization professionals tend to express mixed feelings about fan translations. Yeah, because it kind of puts them out of a job. Uh, yeah, it does. Um, even beyond the issues with legality, fan translations have played a significant role in shaping audience expectations to a degree that professional translators find it over bearing. Well, it is kind of weird when somebody's doing something for free and they're doing it better than you are and you're getting paid, you know, and it does uh, absolutely hurt your bottom line because if there is a, a superior fan translation out there that can be had for free, why are you going to buy an edited watered down version of a product? They're talking about how classroom of the elite, uh, you know, wasn't really a major issue until the hit volume seven when the editing choices started to undermine the story. They said once an invisible process becomes very visible, it opens itself up to criticism. So basically, they're saying if these books were edited without fan translations to compare them to, nobody would have known, which is why 
you know, there were such awful dubs and translations uh, back in the 80s, 90s, because, you know, we didn't know better. We didn't know what we were missing. We didn't know in a lot of cases that uh, uh, some anime series were vastly different overseas. You know, I'm, I'm looking at Robotech. I'm looking at Voltron. You know, we didn't know what they actually were overseas. We just got uh, a translated version of them. I mean, hell, uh, Star Blazers and uh, Battle of the Planets, you know, very, very different from their Japanese counterparts. Uh, so it says, concerning as the incident is, they want to emphasize it does not necessarily reflect a broader trend of censorship within the light novel publishing sector. Uh, I'm going to disagree. I think that there are changes being made. It, it, look, we, we have seen, especially if you go out to Twitter um, and you look at the mindset of some of the people doing the translations right now, a lot of them are very politically minded. They're activists. They're bringing their Western sensibilities to anime and to manga translations. Uh, some of these people were offended by some of the stuff that's coming over from Japan. Again, if you don't want to publish something, don't publish it. Don't pick up the license for it. You know, if you're going to do a, a hack job on it, you know, for God's sake, let somebody else take the license, right? So we've got that on one hand. And then the other hand, we've got, you know, Amazon and, uh, you know, Barnes and Noble, whatever, banning light novels. So they're probably like, well, shit, you know, if we, if we put this book out, completely unedited we're not going to be able to sell it in mainstream channels there's going to be a call to uh, cancel this book or whatever so they got to deal with that issue too so i'm not making excuses for it i'm just saying that you know there are a lot of factors at play here and i do think the the censorship and the the banning spree of light novels played into or is playing into decisions right now uh, as to how to bring this stuff over here Seven Seas novels differ from those of its competitors by crediting editors under the role of adaptation. Uh, the people credited for this role tend to be published YA authors. It appears their role is to rewrite the text they receive from the translators into smoother, more colloquial uh, English. Not all translators are good at fiction writing, which means that the quality of the prose in English light novels tends to vary significantly. So they are rewriting anyway. I mean, look, in some cases, that's okay. I think in some cases it works, um, you know. And there are, there are cases where I've actually preferred the the English version over the Japanese version. I'm thinking, you know, some video games like uh, Working Designs with the Lunar series. You know, they took some liberties. They add some humor to the English translation that wasn't there in the Japanese, if I remember correctly. So basically, this is a defense. They are a translator. I guess Kim, Kim Morrissey is a translator. Uh, I just think it's curious that the backlash was so severe. It was so severe that they have to go back to press. They have to fix this. Hopefully, they've learned a lesson. Hopefully, they won't uh, do this again because now you know that fans are, are definitely watching and it's going to be a very painful financial lesson for them to learn. I, I would tell them too, uh, make damn sure you know what you're acquiring because it might be something you're not comfortable with translating. Um, you know, and it's, it, it, there really isn't any room for buyer's remorse in this market. Like there are so, there's such a demand for manga and uh, light novels at this point that like, if you don't pick it up, somebody else is going to. But if you pick it up, you better give fans an authentic translation or they're going to hold your feet to the fire. going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. <laughs>